Hey guys, welcome back to video three of our type two diabetes recovery program. In this video, we're looking at the food groups and the major considerations in terms of your blood glucose levels. So let's get into it. Okay, so as we already said in the first video, lifestyle, diet, exercise are the major considerations for improving your glucose levels. Medication can help, absolutely, but it is really lifestyle that is gonna make the big difference and turn back the clock on how the disease is progressing. So this, as I've already said, is why the program focuses on these elements. So now we're gonna look at the different food groups and how these are relevant to managing your diabetes. So let's get into it. So we have four different major nutrients that give our body energy. We have fat, protein, carbohydrates, pen's not doing very well, and alcohol. Let me just change the pen here. And alcohol. Now, all of these provide a certain amount of energy for our body to function. Alcohol will have its own video. We're not gonna focus on that one today. But one of these affects your blood glucose levels. The other two don't have much of an impact. That doesn't mean that there can't be healthy foods that still affect your blood sugars, and it doesn't mean that there can be unhealthy foods that don't affect your blood sugars. We're gonna expand on this as the course progresses, but in this video, we're just gonna look at the differences between the foods that affect your blood sugars and the ones that don't. So if we go through them, fat is actually pretty neutral in terms of your blood glucose levels. Protein, also pretty neutral. It is the carbohydrates in your diet that are the ones that affect blood glucose levels. So when it comes to diabetes, this is the one that gets the most attention. So in order to manage your glucose levels, you really need to have an understanding about the types of foods that we need to look out for. And like I say, we're gonna build on these concepts as time goes by. So if it's not all answered in this video, make sure you watch the next few videos and hopefully all will be revealed. But let's just focus on these carbohydrates then. So we've probably all heard of what carbohydrates are and they get a bit of a bad deal in the media, in the press and on social media. Carbohydrates can be very healthy. They can be a very good nutrient in your diet. Even in the realms of diabetes, even though it's the carbohydrates that affect your blood glucose levels, it's not the carbohydrates fault. If you get high blood sugars after eating carbohydrates, it's because of your body's inability to use them properly. Someone without diabetes will be able to use the carbohydrates just fine, regardless of the type, regardless of the amount. So keep in mind, we need to treat the underlying condition, which is your body's inability to use carbohydrates properly. And that's where diet, exercise, lifestyle is gonna come into it as we start to unravel the, uh, the disease. But let's get back to carbohydrates then. So we've got a few different types. Two main subgroups. The first one is starchy or complex carbohydrates. And the second one is sugar. So most people, when they think diabetes, they jump straight to the sugar. Not many jump straight to starchy carbohydrates. Sugar is a carbohydrate. So think of carbohydrate as an umbrella term. It describes lots of different food groups. Sugar has two subgroups as well. We have what we call processed sugar or refined sugars. And we also have natural sugars. So two types. I think they're pretty self-explanatory, but we will give some examples. But let's get back to this one, the starchy carbohydrates. Now that I've said starchy, a lot of you have probably got a pretty good guess about what's gonna go in here. But this is things like rice, pasta, potatoes, cereals, oats, and if you're being fancy, things like uh, quinoa, or depends how you pronounce it, quinoa, for people that are probably given it a first attempt, quinoa is how it's actually said, uh, bulgur wheat, pearl barley, and the list goes on. Vegetables will also fall in here. But we'll come back to vegetables in another video because it's not something that we really consider in terms of blood glucose levels too much. 
we're looking at the big hitters, which are the ones that have a lot of carbohydrate in them, and therefore have more potential to increase blood glucose levels. We'll also talk about the different types of these because some can be very healthy, some can be not so much. So this is just some examples of starchy carbohydrates. Others would be um, bread, anything that is from bread, like bread crumbs, pastry, um, pies, etc. All of those foods can affect your blood glucose levels. Then on the flip side, we have sugar. So we have our processed sugars. So this is things like sweets, cakes, biscuits. Other things like dessert. But also things like jams, marmalade, spreads. And I'd probably put things like juice, orange juice, apple juice, somewhere in the middle because if I said, where do you think juice comes from? You'd probably say it's a natural sugar, but the way it behaves in the body in terms of how it affects your blood sugars is more like a processed sugar. So it lives in here. So natural sugars, our final category, we tend to be more from fruit, or we consider it from fruit. And you also have some in milk or yogurt. This is called lactose. So lactose is a natural sugar that exists in milk. In fact, anything that ends in O's in the nutrition world means sugar. Glucose, fructose, lactose. So that will give you a hint on the food label, whether or not there's sugar in there, if it's not saying straight up sugar. So all of these foods can be broken down into glucose, which is what gets transported around your body and it's turned into, um, to be used for energy. And all have the potential to increase blood glucose levels. So it's not just about the sugar. If you eat too much rice for what your body's able to handle at the moment before we start turning back the clock with the program or any other strategy that you might use, it will cause hyperglycemia, high blood sugar. Same with pasta, same with potatoes. So you could eat any of these and have the same, the same glucose response as if you ate, say, a chocolate bar, which I haven't actually put in here. Now, of course, we know that eating these foods aren't as good for us as eating these and these. So one thing I want you to do as we're talking about this stuff is to free your mind of just a narrow focus of just glucose levels diabetes. There's a bigger picture here. We're looking at overall health as well as managing the glucose levels. So can we still eat these foods and manage our type two diabetes? Absolutely. We just need to have the right strategies in place, managing the portions correctly, getting as active as possible, and you'll be able to tolerate these and achieve normal glucose levels or near normal glucose levels if you're doing the right things, depending on how long you've been diagnosed. Okay, so the idea isn't to cut these out entirely. There's a lot of nutrients there. And also just from a general sustainability perspective in terms of can you stick to the diet that you're doing, having a bit of these in your diet really makes things um, more bearable. And that includes even the processed sugars. We're not dealing in absolutes. Every now and then, if you want some of this stuff, by all means have it. The one-off occasion isn't gonna completely ruin your overall control. And that's where the HbA1c and the time in target, their average is. So if your average is good, you're gonna have a good average glucose control, which then lowers the risk of complications. So anyway, that's carbohydrates. Hope that's a useful video. And we're gonna jump in and start to expand upon this in future videos. So I'll see you in the next one where we're looking at the glycemic index and the glycemic load. Hi guys, Mark here. Thanks for watching. We hope you found it useful. Obviously with the videos on the YouTube and on the website, we're talking general principles here that hopefully you can take and then integrate into your management strategies. But if you're still struggling or you want a more personalized specific help, someone to look at those glucose levels or analyze things and see where things might be going wrong, suggest to head over to diabetesdietguide.com and check out our consultancy packages where we give you access to premium content, but more importantly, work with you on a regular basis to give you specific tailored advice where we can help to improve your diabetes control. Hopefully, by the time you're finished working with us, you won't need us because you'll be the expert. So if it's of interest, remember diabetesdietguide.com. If not, um, and you're not ready to take that step or you don't need it, by all means, please browse the YouTube channel or the website and see if there's anything else we can help you with. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you in the next video.